When I first started driving, everyone I know had gotten into at least one car accident. It was never something that I thought would happen to me until a couple months ago when it did. On October 14th, 2023, I got into my first car accident. And while thankfully everyone was okay, I cannot say the same for my car. As my car was loaded onto the tow truck, all I kept wondering was, what do I do now? Not only did I have to think about the trauma of hearing the sound of my car, the front of my car crumple like a soda can, I also had to deal with the logistical nightmare that was dealing with insurance to get my car repaired. When I called the insurance company and they told me that my car was a total loss, I was met with awkward silences and not even one utterance of the word, I'm sorry. This felt like no one cared about me. That's never an experience you want to leave someone with when you are providing a service to them. After reflecting on this experience, I realized that what the people at the assurance company lacked was empathy. Maybe they were taught that empathy would slow them down, or maybe they thought that empathy wasn't important to their jobs. But I'm here today to show you that empathy can be a superpower. In today's society, we are all about getting things done in as an efficient way as possible. This might mean that empathy can be viewed as an impediment that slows us down, but it can actually be something that is useful to all of our jobs. In the Journal of Patient Experience, which talked about the importance of teaching empathy to those in the medical field, it demonstrated that empathy is not a skill that we develop overnight. It's not something that's instinctual. Instead, it's a conscious choice that we must make. Therefore, empathy can sometimes be forgotten when we interact with others. But what is empathy? When we conceptualize empathy, we think of it as the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. But sometimes that can be forgotten when we interact in jobs with people who are in high stress situations. This can include lawyers interacting with clients, doctors interacting with patients, and car insurance agents interacting with customers. I'm here today to show you a simple framework that I created after reflecting on my experience working with my clients to show you how to embrace empathy in anyone, with anyone you interact with. I call this framework ear. In order to show someone empathy, you must give them a listening ear. Ear stands for engage listening, asking questions, and recognizing perspectives. To interact with someone and give them a listening ear, you must start first with engaged listening. During my first year of law school, my professors hammered home the idea that when we would be done with our first year, we would learn how to think like a lawyer. I quickly learned that when they said think like a lawyer, they were talking about how lawyers analyze problems and recognize situations. Very rarely were they talking about the way that lawyers interacted with clients. During my first year, the only client interaction I had was a staged interview for my legal writing class that focused on gathering facts and did not touch on client relationship building or empathy at all. During my first internship in law school, I worked at an immigration legal services organization where my job was to interview a woman who had recently arrived to the United States from a Latin American country. I would interview her and then pass the notes on to my supervisor who would prepare her asylum application. In order to prepare a successful asylum application, you must prove persecution on five protected grounds. These grounds are race, religion, national origin, membership in a particular social group, or political opinion. For this woman who I had just met an hour ago, she now had to recount the trauma of her experience coming to the United States from her home country. That is not something that we learned how to deal with our first year of law school, so I knew that the things that I learned how to think like a lawyer would be no use to me. Instead, I had to rely on something that I had learned throughout my entire life, relationship building and empathy. In an article titled, The Heart of Empathy, Client Com The Heart of Lawyering, Client Compassion and Empathy, it found that success in law and other fields was more correlated to relationship building than with skills like reading and writing. Therefore, I knew that the way to best connect with my client was through empathy. 
One of the first skills that I learned through interacting with my client was engaged listening, the E of the ear framework. To practice engaged listening, I used verbal and nonverbal cues to communicate with her. By using verbal cues such as yes and no, I showed her that I was paying attention to what she was saying. We also used an interpreter to communicate, and I made sure that instead of looking at the interpreter who was speaking the language that I had learned my entire life, I looked at my client so that she would be comfortable speaking with me directly. I also used nonverbal cues, such as shaking my head. I also learned through this experience the importance of silence in engaged listening. Often we are taught that silence is a bad thing. However, it can be one of the most useful tools when talking to someone, especially when recounting a story. Silence allows the people who are telling the story and the person listening to process their emotions and sit with what has been said. This is especially important when talking with someone who has dealt with trauma, when, when memory is often not linear. Therefore, engaged listening alone is not the only way that you can show someone empathy. You have to follow the other step of the ear framework, asking questions. Asking questions can be difficult when someone is telling a story, but it is one of the most crucial ways to increase interpersonal understanding. This was found in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. When my client recounted her story, I would often ask her questions when there were things that I did not understand. Asking questions allowed me to understand her full story and to get all of the information from her. But asking questions when you are talking to someone, especially when they're recounting a story, is a delicate balance. You don't want to interrupt the person when they are telling their story because it can feel like their, your need to learn a certain piece of information is more important than the story that they are telling. This might make them more closed off and less likely to want to talk to you. Therefore, it's best to ask questions during natural breaks in the conversation. This will allow the person time to process their emotions and time for you to come up with a question Asking questions, though, is only the second step of the ear framework. You also have to recognize their perspective, the R of the ear framework. While the E of the ear framework engaged listening and, and the A, asking questions, makes it so that you have the person's full story, the R of the ear framework makes sure that you understand it. To ensure that you have understood a person's story, one thing that you can try to do is to recount the story back to them. This allows you to place yourself in their position and see what it would feel like when you are talking to someone and see how your actions and, and reactions would affect them. When my client told her story, I recounted what she said back to me. This allowed me to better empathize with her situation by seeing how her reactions and my reactions interacted during the story. We owe everyone we interact with a listening ear. Engaged listening and asking questions helps us to recognize the perspective of others and show greater empathy to them. Showing empathy to people will help us build a better society and a more empathetic one. Empathy, contrary to popular belief, is not an impediment that slows us down. Instead, it is something that can be a superpower in all fields. Doctors who show empathy to patients are more likely to show that these patients followed their treatment plans. Teachers who showed empathy to students are more likely to report positive interactions in the classroom. And car insurance agents who show empathy to customers are more likely to solve the customer's needs and to understand what the customer needs from that situation. Following the ear framework, engaged listening and asking questions to recognize the perspective of others can help us build a more empathetic society. We owe everyone that we interact with a listening ear. Thank you.